Hey, brother, there's an endless road to rediscover. My wife and I came here, I think the first time was in 1991, and we were just traveling through as backpackers, and we fell in love with this area. It was so beautiful, um, and we stayed with the family. So we weren't looking for a hotel. We weren't looking to buy land or start a hotel. We were just traveling. But we were looking for work because as a backpacker, you run out of money, you have to go home. So uh, the family that we stayed with in this village in Chukchilan, they offered to sell us land. And in the beginning, we laughed. We we're like, how could we buy land here? That's, you know. So it all started as a joke. And now the joke just grows bigger and bigger and bigger. So that's how it started, really, was just traveling as backpackers. I think the biggest, biggest challenge, uh, we came here, we built things little by little. It's a grassroots operation, so anytime we had some profits, we reinvested and built either more rooms or a room like this that's just a public room to, to, to make the place better. The biggest challenge was letting go, meaning uh, we worked it, my wife and I built it, ran it, and ran it uh, with the local staff that we trained. Everybody is from the village, but to actually step back and not have us run it anymore was the biggest challenge. So three years ago in 2012, uh, we found Edmundo, Edmundo Vega, and he is from this community, but he uh, worked in Quito for many years in hotels and hospitality. So this was for us and him a dream come true because we rent the entire facility to him. Uh, it's 100% community operated. and and they run everything. So I'm now the owner builder, but I'm not really involved in the operations. And that letting go part and doing that transition was definitely the hardest thing. Uh, it's kind of like seeing your baby grow up and move away from home and do something different that you didn't want them to do. But you have to be able to let go and you also have to have that confidence that somebody else can do as good of a job or maybe even better. So that was the hardest thing. Un mundo mejor sería en que cada persona, cada ser humano, eh, apoye con prácticas ecológicas al planeta. Que cada ser humano eh, empiece a desarrollar a los individuos que le rodean. Eco living is a feature of, of how you treat your waste, or how you produce your energy, or where you get your food from, or how you create your shelter. So a better world would be a world where people um, incorporate those eco-living things into their daily lives because it has less impact on the planet and it's more sustainable. Yo trabajé en hoteles donde se practica muy poco el tema ecológico, pero cuando vine acá me di cuenta que muchos años no hice nada por el planeta. Y creo que trabajando en una área como estas te hace sentir bien porque tú estás apoyando con un pequeño grano de arena, como llamamos, al sistema ecológico mundial. Uh, when we started the Black Sheep Inn, we did things like composting toilets and organic gardens and building out of natural material and planting trees. And we did all that because we did it, because we cared about the planet. And after, I don't know, a few years, five years, ten years, we realized that there were a lot of people calling their business ecotourism and they weren't doing anything. Or maybe they were doing little bits and pieces. They were doing a, a towel and a sheet program or something. So we started calling it ecotourism because we had all these things already going on, which was the recycling and the wastewater and the collecting of rainwater. And the details go on and on. It's how you wrap your lunch to give somebody a lunch for their excursions or that we don't sell bottled water, that we only give people purified water that they can refill their bottles. So once we said we're doing ecotourism, all of a sudden, like, we started being recognized as like a top 10 ecotourist place, which to me is incredible because we were just doing these things because we believed in it anyway. La intención para mí desde hace tres años es que Black Shipping esté involucrado en un alto porcentaje con las acciones frente a la comunidad. 
que la comunidad sepa que Black Sheep es una entidad que da oportunidad al crecimiento de la comunidad. Si el turista necesita un guía, paga al guía. Si necesita caballos, paga al guía de los caballos. Si necesita transporte, paga al transportista de la comunidad. Y nosotros no tenemos ninguna comisión. Eso es muy... Esa es una práctica de turismo sostenible. Y algo que también lo estoy haciendo es comprando los productos del lugar. Y de hecho, eso crea un flujo de divisas a, al pueblo, a la gente que está en el negocio. Esto indica que a, algo muy interesante, como ejemplo, si una persona, si una persona vende un litro de leche en el pueblo, vende a 35 centavos a 35 centavos, pero yo le pago a 50, porque considero que venir a dejar la leche acá es un trabajo, mantener a su productor que es la vaca es un trabajo, y ese trabajo necesita ser sostenible, necesita ser recompensado. Entonces, es un ejemplo que puedo dar cómo nosotros estamos involucrados con la comunidad. El hecho es que la comunidad se sienta también que... Black Sheep es parte del crecimiento, que crece la comunidad y crece Black Sheep. Me parece que es un proyecto muy importante, porque las personas en el mundo deben saber cómo trabajamos, cómo pensamos y cómo desarrollamos. I think it's actually a really good idea to share best practices. Uh, there's so many different colleagues that I have that I can't meet because they're all over the world and I can't go to different places. I try to when I can and it's fun because I love to travel. But um, so having somebody like you that goes around and films different people talking about what they do well or even talking about things that we know are our shortcomings and sharing it online makes us connect to our colleagues. And uh, I had an idea once that I would start traveling and I would have like um, a seal that would be the mark of the black sheep. And I was thinking, well, I can travel, I can stay at places for free, and then I can give people consulting. And, you know, I haven't done that yet, <laughs> but it's an idea. And then seeing somebody else do something similar, not exactly that, but something similar, is very empowering. It's good. And no